My name is Amy D. I'm a public librarian, but I also cosplay. Today I'm here to talk about Maura Milan's sci-fi debut, Ignite the Stars, out this fall from Albert Whitman and Company. I love Aya, and her look inspired me to make a cosplay based on her armor set that's on the book's cover. She's a kick-ass female lead, complex character who does morally questionable things, but always in the name of the underdog. This book is full of action, adventure, a little dash of romance, and a lot of strong friendships. And it's basically everything I love about YA and sci-fi. And Aya's look is really cool. It's this sleek, functional armor that's perfect for running around the galaxy and a great beginner cosplay to make at home. Today I'm gonna to talk about how I made this cosplay and also some tips on how you can achieve Aya's look. The base of Aya's costume is super simple. All you need are some black leggings, a black t-shirt, some boots, a black wig, and also maybe if you want to, a little bit of makeup. I used two different types of foam for this project. Uh, the first is EVA foam or EVA foam. Super dense, really versatile, um, very fine grain. Uh, this is just the stuff for yoga mats, pretty much, or any of those floor mats that you see at the gym. And this is a specialty one that makes high density, really high quality foam. This is just craft foam. You can buy this at any craft store. Um, it's very thin, but it's really great for details. Um, and especially if you're working on a budget, this stuff is pretty much the same as this, just lower quality. Uh, every time I do a cosplay, you need protective gear. This is uh, your eye goggles, protects your eyes from any debris. Uh, but the most important thing is a face mask or a respirator. This protects you from fumes, again, that debris, so you're not gonna get sick from working with some of these things. A lot of these things have toxic fumes. You don't wanna hurt yourself just to make a costume. This is a heat gun. Um, I use this to heat up my foam and foam run around my body. Um, all you do is blast the foam with some heat with this, and you can create any shape that you want. This is a Dremel. Great for sanding uh, the edges of your cosplay to kind of get a fine line, and also great for detail work too. Two of the most important things in your cosplay kit, a ruler for getting those straight lines and a metallic Sharpie. This is great because it shows up on that black and gray foam that I have, and I, I always know where to cut. Speaking of cutting, um, I use a variety of cutting tools. Uh, this is an X-Acto knife, and these are utility blades. Super sharp, so always used under supervision. I also use a fabric measuring tape. They're super flexible, can go around curves and edges, so it helps me get an accurate measurement for something like a chest piece or a helmet. One of the sillier things are these googly eyes. Um, they look really weird, but they're great for buttons or rivets or anything kind of like sci-fi or mechanical. Once you paint them, these won't show, but. For glue, I prefer to use barge cement or contact cement. What this is, is a flexible adhesive that usually is used for shoes, but creates a permanent bond for your cosplay. Very toxic, so always use that respirator. To prime my foam before I paint it, I use two different things, Plasti Dip and Mod Podge. Mod Podge is basically white glue, so it's very cheap and can be found anywhere. Plasti Dip you can find at a hardware store, but it's a rubberized coating, so it really helps grip the paint. I used four different types of paint for my cosplay. Uh, first one is spray paint. Depending on where you live, this might only be available online or you can buy it at your local hardware store. Uh, acrylic paint, any craft store, but it's great for detail work, adding different colors. Rub and Buff is a really great metallic paint. You buff it onto your project and it creates this great metallic sheen. Super toxic, so again, that respirator is needed. And last but not least, I used this leather paint. It's very flexible, uh, goes on foam really nicely, and comes in a variety of colors. Finally, you need to attach your cosplay to yourself, so I used a couple different methods. One is this nylon webbing with buckles. I like this a lot because once you put hot glue on these things, they melt and create a really strong adhesion that's not gonna go anywhere. And last but not least, industrial strength Velcro. You don't wanna skimp on the cheap stuff this stuff stays. Um, you don't want to be walking around a convention and half of your armor is falling off, so it's worth spending a little bit more money for something like this. So the first step to any cosplay is templating and sketching. I always start my cosplay by making a quick sketch of what it's gonna look like. 
it's always great to have a plan before you go in. It's gonna help you save like time and frustration if you just take five minutes to sketch out your idea. Once I have the sketches, I start templating. The templates I used for this, I got online, but you can also make your own. The easiest way to do that is wrap your whole body in saran wrap, cover that with duct tape, and then carefully cut it off of your body. Then you have a template that is perfectly formed to your body. I would say that 90% of my cosplay is made of these three materials. Again, these two are EVA foam, and this one is craft foam. So the first step you need to do is take that template, slap it on here. I always use these metallic Sharpies because again, it shows up on these dark objects a lot easier. Draw it on there and you start cutting. To clean up the edges of my foam, I like to use the Dremel. The Dremel is really nice because it can create shapes. Again, like if you have any ratty edges, really clean those up before you use the heat gun. And just, it can make interesting shapes. Um, they're really cheap. You probably have one in your home. Just ask you know, your friend or your parent to see if they have one you can borrow. The heat gun is probably one of the most fun parts because it's when you take a flat piece of foam and make it into something that's worthwhile. Um, so with the heat gun, all I do is blast the piece of foam with a little bit of heat and then form it to my body. One of the easiest ways to do this is after applying heat, you take the foam, wrap it around your arm or whatever piece you're forming it from and it holds the shape pretty well. With the heat, it's also gonna help it set into that shape too. Once you have all your pieces cut out and heat formed, we're gonna glue it with this barge cement again. Um, it creates a really nice, flexible, permanent adhesion, and the easiest way to do it is take the glue, spread it on the edge of your foam, and then wait five minutes to, you can even wait four hours before it becomes tacky. And then I would take the two seams and just kind of put them together like that. Again, once it dries, it's a pretty strong hold. It's a very time consuming process, so always make sure you're budgeting your time, but this is gonna be the bulk of your work. Now the helmet's a little bit of a different story. I would consider this a more advanced technique, only because there's a lot of curved edges and it takes a lot more work to get something this smooth looking. If you wanna give it a shot, I highly recommend it. It just requires a lot more patience and planning. But if you're looking for something a little bit different, what I would suggest is thrifting. Uh, thrifting's a great way to find cosplay elements for cheap instead of buying it new. If you thrift a bicycle helmet, a kid's toy helmet, or even a motorcycle helmet, and just slap this red feather on it, that's what's important. Um, Aya's signature is this red feather, so you wanna make sure that whatever headgear that you have, that you can use it. For this helmet, um, this visor is not see-through, so it's really more of a prop. If I wore this, I wouldn't be able to see through it at all. But it's a really cool kind of element to your cosplay. So next is my favorite part, which is priming and painting. So after you've constructed everything and it looks exactly how you want it to, we're gonna add that primer. What the primer is gonna do is create a buffer between your foam and your paint. First of all, make sure that your foam isn't absorbing any of the paint. You don't want to waste paint um, and be a little bit more cost effective that way. Uh, the second thing it's going to do is add a little bit of filler between um, any little imperfections that may have happened during the heat forming or cutting. Um, just creates a nicer, smoother surface for the paint to go onto. Aya is always around doing things, kicking butt. This is not pristine armor. It's being used and it's being cultivated. Adding a little bit of silver here just kind of shows the wear and tear of a natural armor. For the helmet, I did something a little bit different for this red feather. The red feather is Aya's iconic signature that she's really known for across the galaxy. So I wanted to make sure I got it right. But I'm not an artist. I can't freehand anything like this. So what I did is I took an image of the feather from the book cover, but you can also find an image of a feather online. I cut out the actual image part and made a stencil that's just the outline. I took painter's tape, taped it to the end of this helmet, and then I just started dabbing paint to create something. Once I took the stencil off, I cleaned up my edges, again took that black paint to really make it a little bit sharper, and now I have this really nice feather on the top. So now that we've painted it, all the paint's dry, we've double-checked that everything fits our body, 
We're gonna add attachments. So this is actually gonna help you wear the armor that you spend a lot of time with. I like to use buckles in areas that I want to like loosen or tighten as the day goes on. Things warm up or things cool down and things start fitting a little bit weird. So these are completely adjustable and to click it, you just buckle it together and you're done. For more stretchy parts, I use the elastic with some of that industrial Velcro. All I do is I make these straps, slap one side of the Velcro here, the other side is hidden here, and then they just Velcro together. Super easy. Final look, I had a lot of fun making this, and as you can see, it looks a lot like Aya's on the cover. Uh, just a couple things about wigs and makeup. This is just a black kind of bobbish wig that I had at home, but again, don't feel like you have to wear a wig if it's outside your budget. For makeup, I did a very natural look too. Um, Aya doesn't really wear makeup. Um, so I went for a very neutral eyeshadow, uh, a pinkish lip, and a very matte look. If you're wearing this at the convention, don't forget your blotting papers and your setting spray. It just helps keep everything really clean, especially if you spend a lot of time on your makeup. It also ensures that it won't wear off through the day and then by the end of the day, all the hard work you put in is gone. So some tips for the con. Um, number one, always have fun and always feel safe. So make sure everyone who's taking your picture is asking you first. Make sure if you don't feel safe to tell your friends, tell the person to back off or tell the con staff. Um, you should never feel like you're in danger or you're unsafe at a con. Um, so be very vocal about that stuff. Um, on a less serious note, make sure you wear nice shoes. They're super comfy. I can wear them all day, walk around, pose, everything. So make sure that you invest in some quality shoes and hydrate and eat well. Um, You'll find that if you're just chugging soda all day and eating junk food, you're gonna feel awful the next day. And if you wanna to go to a con all three days or all two days, you wanna make sure that you're eating right and you're staying healthy.